Remote learning has been hard on families and it probably won't end for a while, even with a plan to return to in-person learning. The Public Education and Business Coalition has given advice and mentoring to teachers for decades. In today's It Takes a Village, Kim Christensen talked to two women who work with the nonprofit to get some advice for parents and caregivers. When we think about relationships and we know that in classrooms, the teacher-student relationship is actually really, really important. Well, what's happening now is our learning place is displaced. And so students are learning at home with their teachers, you know, through the screen, but the person who's coaching or supporting them might be a parent. Relationships have to be a priority right now. When Michelle and I were talking the other day about um, this challenge of parenting in the pandemic, she said something so wise that I wanted to repeat here. And that is that this pandemic is temporary but our parenting role is lifelong and forever. And so as challenging as it may be, I think it's an opportunity for us to really focus on the sorts of relationships we wanna create with our children, be our best selves in those relationships each day, even, even though it's tough. If you could coach parents right now, <laughs> I know that's a big ask, but if you could give parents a couple of really solid tips about how do we get through this remote thing, um, what would you say? It might be having morning rituals where we eat a meal together, or there's a certain song we play, because that structure creates the space where our brains can relax to the point that we're ready to learn. I know it's so easy when a child rushes into the room and says, what's well, three times three to just jump in and say nine. And yet when we do that, what we do is we take away their chance to do the cognitive lift themselves. And so instead we might respond to their request for help with questions. Hmm, what do you think it might be? Or what do you know about what times means? Or well, what's three times two? Because when we do that as a coach, we do two things for them differently. One is we really give them the chance to do some figuring out. It communicates a message to the child. You're, I believe that you are a capable problem solver. You don't need me to tell you. Distance learning can feel isolating. You know, even, you know, kiddos are used to walking down the halls. So how can we connect within our own households in ways that are meaningful, being um, empathetic listeners? We might not be able to fix or solve the problems or the issues or the concerns that our children have, but we can be really good listeners and let, let them, you know, be a sounding board to let them express how they're feeling. If you have a reluctant reader at home, they might not want to read a whole page or a whole paragraph, so it might just be about pointing out words, just to enjoy that experience together. I was working with a primary teacher last night. She said, oh, I just want my kids to have more opportunities to talk. I want them to play and I want them to create. And so we think about all the ways in which you can authentically bring in reading, writing, math, or science, there's great opportunities. If you have children at home or children in your life, you really are their most important resource. What kind of example am I today? And that was an invitation for me to reflect during stressful times on what I was modeling for the children in my care. And so right now we have a chance to demonstrate as parents, our example is what we're teaching. We teach who we are. Such great tips there. And by the way, kudos to all the parents that are doing this remote learning thing at home. It's got to be so tough and you're doing an awesome job. The PEBC website also offers virtual field trips and an online course on remote learning. Michelle started a podcast during the pandemic featuring teachers and the successes they've discovered while going remote.